Okay, hi, this is Mrs. Often, and we're here today reviewing law of sines, law of cosines, and area formulas. These are specially formulated to meet all your oblique triangle needs. Remember that if we're working with right triangles, we can use law of sines or law of cosines, but it's easier to just use standard right triangle trigonometry. So our first review is law of sines. I've drawn this nice triangle here. Notice how side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, and side C is opposite angle C. The formula for the law of sines, seen here, sine A over side A equals sine B over side B equals sine C over side C. So these are three ratios. They're all equal to each other. You only need three pieces of information to make a proportion. However, you do have to always be able to make um, one pair of a side and an opposite angle in order to fill in enough information. Therefore, we tend to use this either with angle, side, angle, 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 side labeling, or side, side, angle which some of you may have heard referred to as the donkey theorem because that's what it says if you read it backwards. This is also known as the indeterminate case. It may produce two answers, one answer, or no answers at all. Next up is the law of cosines. Again, I have another triangle here, another oblique triangle. The law of cosines is used when you have three labeled sides or two labeled sides and the included angle. The formula for law of cosines is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. There's some alternate forms. If you're given, for example, side b, then maybe you want to write it this way. b squared equals c squared plus a squared minus 2ca cosine b. Or, if you're looking for the length of side a, Perhaps you want to write c squared plus b squared minus 2cb cosine a. Really, it's just a labeling switch here, but you do want to be sure that the side and its opposite angle are the ones that are furthest apart from each other in your formula. You can also adjust this to isolate that cosine of the angle expression. I haven't done that here. So I say law of cosines is like the super Pythagorean theorem. And if we cover up this little piece here, you see, hey, there's the Pythagorean theorem. And there's our correcting factor for the oblique triangles. OK, so here's our problem. We'll use both law of cosines and law of sines to solve the triangle, that is, find all of the missing sides and angles. I'm going to solve for the largest angle, angle C, first using law of cosines. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. So C squared is 13 squared or 169 equals 12 squared, 144 plus 11 squared, 121, minus 2 times 12 times 11, and 2 times 12 times 11, I'm just going to use my calculator for ease of calculation, 264 cosine C. Okay, these two are like terms. I can combine them and subtract from 169. This is not a like term. Leave it alone. So I'm going to do 169 minus this 144 and 121. So that's going to be negative 96. Negative 96 equals negative 264 cosine C. That means that the cosine of C is equal to negative 96 divided by negative 264. And that is 0.3636, approximately. I'll take the inverse cosine of this. And I get that C is approximately 
68.7 degrees. To me, that seems reasonable. It is, after all, going to be the biggest angle. Now, I have a side and its opposing angle. I can go on from here and use law of sines to continue solving. So I'm going to solve for my middle side, or my middle angle, angle A. So I'll have sine of 68.7 degrees over 13 equals sine of A over 12. In order to get sine of A all alone, I'll multiply both sides by 12. So I'll have 12 times sine of 68.7 degrees divided by 13 equals sine of A. Okay, and that's 0 0.8600. And just check this, you do want to be sure that you're within that negative 1 to positive 1 range for the sine function, otherwise you'll get errors. I'll take the inverse sine of that value and angle A is 59.3 degrees. That means, so here's angle A, 59.3. That means that angle B is going to be very tiny. So we'll do 180 minus 59.3 minus 68.7. Okay, well, compared, I guess it's not that tiny, but angle B has a measure of just 52 degrees. Checking, does this make sense? Remember, in a triangle, the smallest side is always opposite the smallest angle. Here we can see angle 52 degrees across from 11. Middle sized angle 59.3 across from the medium sized side. And the largest angle, C, is across from the angle, or is across from the side measuring 13. So these answers make sense. In solving this triangle, we started out using law of cosines, but finished using law of sines. You could have used law of cosines, but I think it's easier to use law of sines. Now there's two area formulas for a triangle apart from the usual one-half base times height. The first can be used if you have this side angle side configuration for your triangle. So if I want to find the area of my triangle, and we found out before that theta was 52 degrees, well, I'm going to do this formula, 1 half times AB, those are my two sides, times sine of theta. So I'll fill in everything I know. And I'll just evaluate to find the area. Now sine of 52 degrees is 0 0.7880. And I'll multiply that by 13, by 12, and by 1 half. So I get an area here of 61.5 units squared. So approximately 61 and a half square units of area. One thing I do just to check and see if this is reasonable is I just do one half AB 
multiplying these two sides together and then multiplying by one half, that's going to give me an upper limit on the area. So since this value is less than that upper limit, I can say this does make sense. Okay, so the area of this triangle, 61.5 square units. The final area formula for a triangle is Heron's formula. And if you recall this from last year, yes, it is actually named after a guy named Heron. So in this formula, we have S times the quantity S minus A times the quantity S minus B times the quantity S minus C. Here, S stands for the semi-perimeter, the sum of the three sides, then divided by 2. So I have 12 plus 13 plus 9. And so the semi-perimeter is half of that, or 17. Now when doing S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, I start with A being the smallest side. So I'm going to do 17 minus 9, or 8. B, I'll use the side of middle length. 17 minus 12 is 5. And then the longest length side for C. I just do it this way because I like to. You don't have to. I just think it keeps things nicely organized. So now I'm going to substitute these values into my formula. 17 times 8 times 5 times 4. And then I'm going to take the square root of that product. So let's get the product first. 17 times 8 times 5 times 4 is 2,720. So I'll take the square root of that and I get an area of 52.1 square units. Now if I'm asking myself, does this make sense for an answer, I may want to think back to the last triangle I worked with. And I'll just pull that slide over. This was our 12, 13, and 11 triangle. It had an area of 61.5 square units. This new triangle is 12, 13, and 9. I would think that this would have a slightly smaller area. And what do you know? It does, so I feel like my answer is fairly accurate. Your other option here is to go ahead, use law of cosines, find one of these missing angles, and then use one half AB sine C. So there's a brief review of law of sines, law of cosines, and two triangle area formulas.